Paul spotted Barbara and immediately switched to work mode, grabbing a hot cup of coffee and a data pad from the reception desk and sliding alongside of Barbara as she walked directly to the elevator. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Dr. Kane. Paul handed Barbara the pad and then traded her the coffee for her coat and scarf. The elevator opened instantly and they stepped inside. Barbara took a sip of the coffee as she looked down at the data pad. Her eyes scanned the information, taking in what she needed to know for the day's work. Automatically, Paul put out his hand to take back her coffee mug. Barbara handed him the mug without taking her eyes off the pad and then dug in her jacket pocket, pulling out an earpiece which she fitted into her ear. It's the preliminary report on this character, Dr. Kane. He's no different than the others. Psychotic, arrogant, aggressive, generally an all-around nasty. I really think you should have someone in there with you. Barbara, still preoccupied with what she was reading, said, You're probably right. What is the percentage of cyberware to organics on this one? Uh, we're looking at about 80% cyberware here. The elevator door opened with a chime, and they stepped out into the lab area. All right, Barbara said. I'm going in. Amongst the other data on the screen was a small video image of a man known as Uther Cantrell, about 25 years of age. He was sitting in a restless and agitated state in a dark room on one side of a desk. The most distinctive thing about Uther was that he was more machine than human, with cybernetic limbs and electronic attachments attached to his skull. He was bald and had multiple tattoos. Barbara took back her coffee mug for a last sip. Paul looked at her with concern. No security? Barbara brushed him off. It only seems to agitate them. Keep the cameras running. Off the corridor that Paul and Barbara were walking was a room marked Observation Room C. They entered, and Paul hung up Barbara's coat and scarf and then seated himself at a computer terminal which had multiple screens. Barbara tapped her earpiece and an indicator popped up that it was ready to record on her data pad. She began to recite her notes. Cyberpsychosis Research, Tashamar Corporation, September 26, 2046. Subject, Uther Cantrell, 25 years of age, cybernetic distribution extensive, Uther comes to us on loan from the NYPD. He is the subject of an ongoing murder investigation under psychiatric examination at the Q Institute. Uther seems to be more fuel for my argument that our cyberware products seem to have an adverse, almost addictive effect on a growing number of users. I hope that Uther will provide us with some insight into the reasons for this addiction and the insanity which accompanies it. Barbara glanced over at Paul raised an eyebrow at him and nodded towards the door that connected the observation room to the interrogation room. Paul sighed and, reluctantly, tapped a key on his console, releasing the lock on the door. Barbara opened the door and took a seat across the desk from Uther, the door shutting behind her and locking with a click. As Barbara took a last glance at her notes on her pad, Uther looked at her, he smirked for a second, leaning forward and lacing his cybernetic fingers together in a pose of mock seriousness, like an executive preparing for an important meeting. Barbara glanced up at him, feeling his eyes on her, and then smiled her warmest facsimile of a smile. So, how are you feeling today, Uther? You think I'm ill in the head, don't you? That's not exactly how I would have put it, but I know that I see things differently now than I used to, Mother. The world is a bit of a fraught these days, and you have to keep a wary eye out, now don't you? At this, Uther made his eyes bug out comically, looking left, then right, then left again, like an unsettling cartoon. This was obviously an unnatural ability, Uther's intention was to unsettle her. Barbara stayed cool. Yes, 
I suppose that's true, she said. Uther leaned back, more casual now. I know that I'm feeling much better now that I'm here with you, Mother. I'll be right as rain now that you're looking after me. We're going to try. Barbara thought about his phraseology and asked, Why do you keep calling me Mother? Well, that's what you are, aren't you, me Mother? You've disarmed me gadgets. They're your children. And since most of me is now your children, what do you suppose that makes me? I see, Barbara nodded. That's quite a clever observation. Uther smiled, like a child seeking adult acceptance, and then, with his right hand, reached over and grabbed his left wrist. He held them both up for her to see. Little, little dumpling, my son John, went to bed with his breeches on. One hand off, and one hand on. Uther twisted his wrist with a quick jerk, and the hand disconnected and went limp. He waved it at her as though it was saying bye-bye. <laughs> dill, dill, dumpling, my son John. That goes over big in the slag bars, I tell you. Just as quickly, he reconnected the hand to the wrist. As it snapped back into place, the hand came back to life. Small sounds of motors going through an initial systems check could be heard. Uther leaned back, now eyeing her with a wry grin. He placed a hand right above his zipper. Of course, I have other detachables that are even more of a crowd pleaser. That's quite all right, Uther. I think I get the idea, Barbara said. Uther's smile faded. He seemed to shift into another place, another time. Rod, that's just what she said to me. Barbara glanced up at him quickly. Who? she asked. Little Priscilla. Little Pris. Damn her to hell. She ought not act like that with me. She ought not. Priscilla Barnes, the woman in the papers who's been missing, Barbara asked. Uther continued. Dressed like a little cat she was. A little pussy cat. She kept smiling at me. Drinking and smiling. Smiling and drinking. Uther. Uther. She snapped her fingers. I'm losing you here. Who are you talking about? Are you talking about the missing woman? Suddenly, Uther snapped back. I like little pussy. Her coat is so warm. And if I don't hurt her, she'll do me no harm. So I'll not pull her tail, nor drive her away. And little pussy and I very gently will play. <laughs> Uther let out a huge laugh and grabbed the edge of the desk, flinging it upward. His tremendous cybernetic strength made the desk fly off to one side, crashing into a wall. Uther stood, laughing and howling at the ceiling. Barbara, realizing her time was done, scrambled for the door. A siren went off. Slowly, gas started to seep into the room. Barbara who was coughing now, trying to catch her breath, made her way to the door, and Paul swiftly released the lock. She exited, and the door slammed shut behind her. Uther, looking around, scanned the room. His vision, being electronically enhanced, allowed him to see much of the apparatus that was built into the walls of the room. He spotted a hidden camera with which Barbara was monitoring him from the lab. With his fists, he smashed through the wall and pulled the camera out, shouting into the lens, Oh, and the truth, mother! Does the truth frighten you? You made me! As the gas started to take effect, 
Uther started to cough and drop to one knee, becoming more sedate. For every evil under the sun, there is a remedy, or there is none. If there be one, seek till you find it. If there be none, never mind it. With a thud, Uther collapsed to the floor. Barbara and Paul both stared at the viewscreen.